Yeah, like, you know, I was, she knew I was trying to make an appointment. She told me I was going to be on, like, you know, on hold for, like, six weeks because they're pretty much booked, you know, because there's a clinic and, you know, it's offering you certain privileges. Like, it's much cheaper. So they have to ask you those questions. And she did. She asked me those four questions. Like, have you had any suicidal thoughts lately? And blah, blah, blah. And actually, I was honest and I told her yes. And I love how they made the distinction between, she said, okay, is that suicidal as in you just don't want to be here you just kind of feel like giving up or you've actually been making plans to like take your life and I was like it's definitely the first I said I would never take my life so I haven't spoken I don't well I mean obviously years ago when I was a teen but I don't remember those times so I just thought it was interesting how I guess they're so familiar with it you know and the way that we feel that they ask that question they know the difference between you actually planning to do it and you just all this stuff is going on inside of you you're just like this is the only way out you know, so I was I was happy to hear that. My point is, <sighs> I praise God for you people who are not dealing with this. I'm happy for you. I would never wish it upon my worst enemy. Well, if, if it is my worst enemy, they're already tormented anyway. But <laughs> you're not going to be an enemy of another soul unless you already have darkness in you. So they're not well either. But I would not wish this upon anybody. Um, I'm thankful that the Lord chose me to give me this cup of suffering because I feel like it's going to help me in ministry and it's going to make me more gracious and more loving I have such a big heart for the broken I can't even <sighs> if you haven't seen it already I mean I really really do I really 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 do I just I can't even explain it I really do have God's heart for broken people but y'all don't know what it feels like to it's like you're literally about to combust you're combusting mentally you're combusting emotionally like every part of you is just like being destroyed on the inside because you really want to be vocal about what's going on and how you feel but when, when you do people think you're crazy and these kind of questions when you go to a psychiatrist they prove that which is why you really have to be very wise about what you share <laughs> because if you say the wrong thing they're going to put you in the nut house if you admit and say yes I've been having suicidal thoughts lately or yes I've been having thoughts about killing you know the people lately which I don't really judge that either because I don't really know what's going on in there but it's it's just the fact that you really can't open up it's like people there's there's this like superficial veil where people want you to be open which I'm a naturally open person already but I'm just saying like when it comes to what you're battling mentally people want you to be open about it they want you to talk and but it's like when you finally do this whole image that you created for yourself and how you want people on the outside to see you it gets completely destroyed and you can't change that after that there's no going back and they don't accept you so you're just kind of stuck to just be suffering on the inside and just basically be tormented and I'm not speaking from a demonic you know sense either I'm just saying like just turmoil wise like you know it's there's really no way out <sighs> It, it just upset me and I wanted to make a video to talk about it like I think in some past videos that I've, I've used the term crazy like I said crazy exists don't get me wrong it's out there you got some sisters and you got some people they're just wicked um, on top of psychological disorders on top of yeah they probably have all those different classifications but they're wicked my point is there's people who are broken that actually do need help they do need the healing they do need that love you know they need that process to get started whether that's through somebody that father puts in their life or, you know, psychiatric help, which that can help a little bit. That's not the answer to everything. For some people, I've seen reviews on some videos for certain medications I was looking up recently and they say it changed their whole life. So I'm like, well, more power to you. You know, crisis at the end of that. <laughs> I think it helps temporarily. But um, I forgot what the heck I was talking about. What the heck was I talking about? Yeah, I forgot. Crap. There it goes. Darn. Yes, okay. Yeah, crazy. Um, Broken people are not crazy. I feel like you can still be deranged and you can still be mentally ill or you, you can reach the point of mental illness. I definitely think there's a process of deteriorating to where you get to that point because it's not being treated regardless of how you treat it. And we have different ways of treating what we deal with. People treat, and that's what's so crazy about it to me. I'm like, you know, the main people who are manifesting the turmoil, the, the inner turmoil more, you know, dramatically than the people who aren't. 
they're the ones that's labeled as like, you know, not mentally well or mentally ill, you know, and obviously probably they probably have the similar things going on, but people treat it through sex. People become sexual addicts because that's pleasure. There's literally chemicals that are being released when you engage in sexual intimacy with somebody else. And that's why you have a lot of people that are sexually active to cope with sexual abuse or to cope with drug abuse or to cope with some other type of trauma. So they're treating it. They're just not treating it in a political sense. They're not getting psychiatric pills, but they're doing other things to try to treat it or they drink or they start smoking or they do something else. That's broken people to me. That's not somebody. I feel the same word about the word. I feel the same way about the word nigga. It's just like, you know, that it's derived from a negative term. You know, like, you know, this is something that we were called by our slave masters. And the fact that it's just being so used so loosely today, it really disgusts me. So, yes, yeah, stop being quick. If somebody's crazy, if you're going to put crazy on somebody, then put it on the right people. You can tell who's sane and who's not sane. You can tell who's sound-minded. They still have some sense of self. They just need some help. Or they're just really broken. And once they get the love and the healing and the help that they need, they're not going to be that way anymore. But don't just be quick to just throw somebody away and just discard them. You know, it, it, it just, it just, it continues that whole negative stigma, that whole negative, you know, just what the heck this world really does. Like, you know, we pick and choose who we want to accept and click up, you know, ourselves with, you know, and really all it does is just, it just shows that you don't really have a lot of grace in your heart the way that the Lord does. That's really all that's showing. There's no grace there. There's no room for you. There's only room for certain kinds of people that we think are okay. And, you know, that's, it's a very similar attitude that the Pharisees had. And what did the Lord say about that? I didn't come for those who are already well. I came for the sick. Isn't that surprising? I just love how the Lord does this like flip, you know, like upside down type of thing. Like he knew who he was coming for. The scatterbrain people, you know, the people who are just it, just whatever your situation was. He said it himself that I'm coming for those who need a healer. If you feel like you're already OK, then you have no place in my kingdom. That's not who I came for. I came for the main people that you're calling sick and demonized and crazy and lunatic you know, and all this other stuff. So, and I have layers. The thing with me, I mean, as a sister, I'm very spiritually mature, but soulishly broken. So I can discern when somebody's being petty. I can tell when they have another issue with me and these are just things that are being said to hurt me or they're just, you know, it's just more so, you know, a personal offense coming out. I can discern all that stuff, but it still hits a different place, you know, sensitively, because I just kind of feel like, you don't know me you've never met me even if you have met me you've never actually sat down and chopped it up with me we never had a conversation for you to really get into my thoughts get into my mind get into my heart to really understand me as a person understand why I am the way I am and to be honest if people were more open to doing that with other people all that judgment stuff would cease because you would finally get a chance to see people the way the Lord wants you to see them Nothing just appears, you know, out of nowhere. Only God can do that when it comes to creation. <laughs> but I mean, as far as everything else, there's always a root to the tree. There's a reason why people are the way they are, whether it be extremely deeply spiritual and something you just really don't understand. Or maybe it could just be their upbringing. Maybe it could be, you know, we are trees ourselves. We literally were planted from our father's sperm. You are a tree. The minute you were conceived you begin the process of growth and development as a tree. So sometimes people can just become the way that they are due to seeds that were sown into them over time, whoever they were around, whoever is, you know, serving as markers in their development as an individual. So nobody's just crazy. You know, you have to really, like I said earlier, if you don't care and you don't want to explore that part about somebody, that's fine. But don't be quick to be putting all these judgmental labels like you know same exactly what the father said do unto others as you would have them do unto you if you maybe the lord may allow you to come under something like that so you can finally be humbled i think about nebuchadnezzar nebuchadnezzar was so proud i mean he wasn't he wasn't proud against anybody with mental disorders <laughs> but you know the father made his mind into the mind of a beast because of how proud and arrogant he was and it's just like, you know, 
everybody's under this reprobate mind calling other people all these terms of, you know, crazy when everybody's crazy. But my thing is, if you were suffering something emotionally or you had a deep pain or a deep trauma, a deep soulish wound or your heart is just broken and you really need the Lord to heal it. And for some reason, it's just not the season for that healing. If you wouldn't want somebody to see those ugly words hurt they are curses. Words are very powerful. They're spiritual. Whether they're being directed at you personally or you're hearing somebody gossip and say it about you, it is hurtful. If you wouldn't want that coming at you, if you wouldn't want to receive that, don't dare say it about somebody else, especially if you don't even know them. You don't understand them as a person. Sit down and, you know, try to get to know people sometimes, you know. Get a chance to know their background. What was their relationship with their parents? What's their, you know, how do they see the world? How do they feel inside? Ask people how they're doing today. What's going on in your mind today? Get to know them as a person. They are a tree. There is a reason why you're seeing what you're seeing. This is not grounds to just, you know, deliberately just cut somebody off. And, you know, we may not do it through our actions all the time, but we do it through our words when you choose to label people certain things. And as far as like actual mental disorders and stuff, that's not even, that's something to help you understand as far as a chart with, you know, what treatment to give you. That's not saying who you are. That's not labeling who you are as a person. So if somebody was actually dealing with bipolar or borderline or narcissism, okay, well, that helps me, you know, gauge what you're dealing with. That doesn't tell me who you are as a person especially in a professional sense in a professional field that's to you know help you begin treatment that's helping us identify what treatment the best treatment to give you i'm not going to give you adhd medication if you're dealing with narcissism that's retarded it's, it's just sick to me like you have a lot of people that you know they have a lot of bad upbringings you know they have a lot of trauma that's going on they haven't yet healed from and they are a part of these kind of communities. And if you're making fun of people like that and you're calling them all these different names, it's just really nasty. Because more than likely, these are people who are on the process of healing and they're not going to stay that way, <laughs> you know. But it's just going to add on to what they're already dealing with and what they're already feeling about themselves. And I can speak for myself as well because my whole situation just sucks for me personally because I know what I'm dealing with spiritually and I know what it is mentally and psychologically. So thank the Lord. I have all those wonderful diagnoses and all that other stuff. That's great. But <laughs> like for example, or example, example, you know, the channel coming down and coming up. I've, I've probably expressed in so many different videos on why I've done that. And I still feel to this day, oh, everybody thinks I'm crazy. You know, everybody rejects me. Nobody loves me when they see that. Or, you know, I start thinking about certain people I know in real life who may be watching it and who may, you know, I think about all of that. And it's just like, none of that stuff should even matter. It's out there because the word says that the love of many, you know, will grow cold the more that the last days, you know, really progress. But I, 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 might, I mainly have a Christian community following me. So if it was really people with the love of God in their heart and it was really grace, it really shouldn't matter anyway. I don't know but yeah like I get it but I just I just wanted to talk about that because I saw it and it just nothing against her it, it just it just pissed me off and I said this a few years ago with my last job experience and I told y'all how the human resources manager that I had at that time he was a flaming homosexual right <laughs> And he said that I was not mentally well. He, he basically made a derogatory comment about that to me just because I was trying to be professional with him. And I just kind of find it so interesting how it's people who are, I consider homosexuality a mental illness. So that's what's so interesting about this to me. You're calling me this stuff when you're having sex with the same sex. That's disgusting. But this person is the mentally ill one. This is the bipolar, you know, crazy, all, all those wonderful terms that we call each other. So loving, right? So encouraging. That's definitely the fruit of Christ. As far as speaking life <laughs> to each other, being edifying, right? I just always thought that was weird. And my sister is a lesbian and she's married. She's legally married to a woman. And I just thought that was so interesting reading that, like she called me bipolar. But I mean, okay. 
so yeah but that's what it is for me and I, I to be honest I don't even talk to the Lord about it anymore because I feel like I've been feeling the same thing consistently for years I don't feel anything new so I don't really have anything new to say to him that's how tired I am I'm tired of people I'm tired of being here at least put me around loving gracious understanding people who's going to aid in my treatment and my healing from what this is I'm not trying to stay here forever but this cycle of abuse emotional abuse verbal abuse that you experience from people who are not trying to understand you they're just they see something or they hear something and then that's enough for them they turn you off <sighs> I'm just uh, I don't know I'm tired of it. it it really does overwork your mind it really does and I know that a part of it is just I'm just too good for people it's true <laughs> I mean, especially like listening to this, like, yeah, the way that I see things and the way that I think people are not even, how do I word this? Yeah, I, I can't think, I can't think of a way to kind of word what I'm trying to say, but I just, I feel like there's a beast mind and then there's, you know, a genuine, loving, caring person who actually sees the souls of other people. And I just kind of feel like you're just probably just not a good person. I, I couldn't, I couldn't just look at somebody like that and see it. Like I, I could probably discern that something like that is taking place with the individual, but I would try, I would probably try to like find out what's going on inside, you know, it just upset me. <laughs> And I wanted to talk about it because that's something that I battle every day. That actually is a part of mental illness. I consider that mental illness because of what that does to your mind of just, you know, telling yourself every single day that people think that you are crazy. And maybe not even just the term itself, but what that means to people. It means your rejection. It means, you know, your unacceptance, disapproval of you because you are this way and we don't understand it we don't have any interest in trying to understand it we don't want to and what you're dealing with even though it's negative where you are right now that is a part of who you are so they are rejecting you so i'm just uh, i'm just tired i just i'm tired of everything I'm tired of giving out more than what I get myself. I'm tired of doing, doing, doing for other people. And there's nothing being done, done, done for me. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'll talk to y'all later.